I would say. Andy Dalton and the 7-0 Bengals face the 2-6 Browns tonight. Johnny Manziel will be under center. The last time he faced the Bengals, it wasn't pretty. His QBR was 1.1. He threw for 80 yards, two interceptions, and was sacked three times in a 30-0 loss. But that was his first career start. Tonight, it will be his fourth. We welcome in Ryan Clark. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Welcome back. Good. Appreciate Good it. to see you, as always. All right, what What's do you... up, big boy? What's happening? What All do you right. expect from Johnny tonight? Um, I expect them to go with the Tennessee Titans, Johnny. The guy that threw 15 times was 8 yeah. for 15. Uh, I, I expect them to try to find ways to protect him. I also expect him to produce some big plays. The happiest player on the field tonight will be Travis Benjamin because it seems like when Johnny plays, he gets opportunities deep down the field because Johnny wants to go there. He mm -hmm. wants to be explosive. Coach Pettin and the coaching staff at Cleveland, they have to find a way to protect him. Uh, getting the ball to Duke Johnson, finding ways to use Bornage in the passing game because he has been very productive in these last few weeks. You're going to get some good things from him, but you're going to get bad ball security. Mm. You're going to get mistakes in the passing game, make, making bad decisions because that's who he is. He's not going to come out tonight and be a ball control Let's do everything correct. I'm going to stay in the pocket, make my reads, throw the ball away if I don't have it type of guy. And you can't expect that from him. On the other side of that, Carlos Dunlap, Geno Atkins, oh. Michael Johnson, perfect. You have Adam Jones on the outside. Fitz so there's all these people on the other side of the ball that's going to make this extremely hard extremely for Johnny Manziel. This yep. is the best, one of the best teams in the AFC, the number one team in the AFC North, who just realized and found out they can win games without playing their best ball. Short week for Johnny Manziel against a really good team. There's going to be some good things, some bad things, but they'll lose by two touchdowns. That's to put it mildly, I would think. <laughs> yeah. Stephen A., Nothing but love and respect for my Libra brother, Ryan Clark, up there. Oh, Libra brother? Libra. Wait, 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 where does that come it's from? It's a great month. It's a well, great well, month. Well, well what he's, are we talking he's, about? he's born October 12th. I'm October 14th. It's wow. a great month. Uh, I need to Google those traits. What about traits? that week? Yeah. Think about that week. What, what, what's the problem? That's number one. I just brought that up. <laughs> Much love and respect because at some later date off the air, Ryan Clark, you and I will discuss why you let Skip put you up to wearing that shirt. We'll discuss that later. <laughs> now let's get, now let's get, now let's get, we'll discuss that later. Wait, now can, 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 I, can I interject? <laughs> is, 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 because you're both Libras, is that why you repeat just about everything Ryan says on this oh. show? Well, I wasn't aware that I did that, but if I do, if I do so, there is no shame because the man happens to know a thing or two yeah. about football, mm. certainly more than I know. So I, like I tell people when I'm giving my speeches, I'm brilliant because I know I'm not. Oh. I just steal brilliance <laughs> from other people. Yeah. He's, he's brilliant when it comes to the game of football. I'm listening to his expertise mm -hmm. and I get what he's saying. Let me piggyback off of that, however, yeah, skipping all seriousness when we go to Cleveland and Cincinnati. We've been talking about Johnny Manziel and the absence of weapons. Skip, this team has a decent passing attack. They've got a top 10 passing attack. Their problem is in running the football because they don't have anybody that's averaging more than three yards a carry. So when you talk about a Duke Johnson, you've got to get him the ball. You're talking about a Kelvin Benjamin, you've got to get him the ball. You're looking at some of these guys, the Gabriels of the world, Garbarnage of the world. You've got to get these guys the football. They seem capable of doing so with the Johnny Manziel. But they're going up against a superior Cincinnati Bengals team on the road. If they could run the ball more effectively, I would have more faith that they could make this an interesting game. But Ryan, Skip, because I think they're going to have to air it out in order to, to really put some points on the board, I think to some degree that's going to play in the Cincinnati's hands. I think that you're going to see guys getting a hat on Johnny Manziel. I could see one or two fumbles coming tonight, Skip, and at least, at least one interception. So I'm going to pick Cincinnati to win this game by about 14. I don't think that Johnny Manziel will be god-awful, but I do think that he will make some mistakes I also believe it will be contributed to the fact that they don't have much of a running game. And the combination of that, along with his miniature status, once they put a hat on him, I think they're going to hurt him a little bit. They're going to wear him down, and mm. there's going to be some turnovers that's going to be imminent, and that will lead to Cleveland's demise. 
I'm sorry, this is going to be another nightmare for Johnny Manziel. This is wrong place, wrong time, wrong opponent, division rival. You can argue that the Browns will get up for this because it's somewhat of a rivalry, Ohio rivalry, obviously. Mm -hmm. But listen, the, the Browns in, in points scored are 25th in the league. In points allowed, they're 26th in the league. So I, I don't, you know, Josh McCown's made some decent throws because he's a tough guy. He hangs in, he's smart, and yet, they can't run the ball. They're 31st in rushing, so that will take no pressure off Johnny Menzel. I thought Brian Billick was interesting on Mike and Mike this morning because he said to me as I watch it, it, it's so easy right now to defend Johnny because you just tell everybody, stay in your lanes, keep him in the pocket, and play zone against him because he's played so little that you, you know this way better than we do, but if, if you just mix and match a bunch of zones that, that are just so confusing on the fly, especially on the road against, as you said, a very talented and experienced defense, it's mind boggling what he would see or not see because Gary Barnage, who's, who's had a nice year, but he's yeah, bounced he around and it's like, that's all you got is Gary Barnage, really? <laughs> and I agree with Travis Benjamin. I mean, he, he can get behind people. I just don't think he'll get behind these people. I, I just don't think they'll allow it. And I don't think Johnny will have enough time. And, and we know that when Johnny gets outside the pocket, he can do as much damage as anybody in pro football when he gets outside. I don't think they will allow it. I think Marvin Lewis is too good at coaching that side of the ball. And in Cleveland's side of the ball, Joe Hayden, who's the best player in their mm -hmm. defense to me, we had him on the show back at the NBA Finals, he's a great young man. God bless him. He's in the concussion protocol. I'm almost sure he's not going to play tonight. So what? What are you? What are you going to do? What? I, I mean, you guys are saying two touchdowns. I mean, I mean it feels well, like four touchdowns to me. It feels like it's going to get out of hand fast. Skip, what? go ahead. You're Skip, the, 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 the most important. Cincinnati is seventh on defense in terms of points allowed, but 22 in terms of yards allowed, and they're 23rd against the pass. So what that says to me, because I see the personnel that they have and I know they're talented enough, is that they take a lot of chances. They bend, but they don't necessarily break, but they take a lot of chances. And I believe that because it's Johnny Manziel that's out there, somebody that they've clearly rattled in the past, I think you'll see Cincinnati taking a few things for granted taking a few chances and opening up opportunities for Johnny Manziel to exploit. He'll lose more than he'll win, but I think he'll have some good moments tonight and at least attempt to make it respectable. I think he'll pull that off to some degree for at least three quarters. Can I throw one thing out there? Dolan has struggled against the Browns guys. They've held him under 120 yards passing the last three times they played. The last two home games, a QBR of four. Just yeah. playing devil's that, advocate, that was, not suggesting with, anything. That was with a good Joe Hayden. Good a, Joe a Hayden. Healthy Joe Hayden. I know. That was Tayshawn Gibson last yeah. year being pretty much the breakout star at he, free he safety. Was. Yeah. And so there were some different things going on. And it was also a different Andy Dalton. It wasn't the Andy Dalton we saw come out last week, throw a pick in the red zone, and then drive his team back down to score the winning touchdown. So you're looking at this team, and it's totally different. It's a team that has something to prove, and he hasn't been good in prime time. Mm -hmm. He really hasn't. But this team is so much better than the Cleveland yeah. Browns are, no. it really doesn't matter. No. Nope. Andy Dalton just has to be okay. He has to go out and not lose it. You're talking about Johnny Menzel on a short week with an opportunistic defense because even though, like Stephen A. said, they give up yards, you look at last week against the Steelers, they created turnover. Reggie Nelson with two pick. Williams comes up with a huge pick on the sideline. That's why they won that game. So if they're opportunistic against a guy like Ben, even though he's coming off yeah. of an injury, think about Johnny Menzel, the chances uh -huh. he takes. Like you said, playing a zone, getting eyes to the quarterback. Kirkpatrick, those guys, they're going to have opportunities to make plays. And I think they make plays tonight, enough plays that this game's not even close. Okay, quick thought from you. Johnny's future in this league, in football in general. I think Johnny can play. Okay. Uh, I, I think they're doing a really good job of bringing him along slowly. I have confidence that he can be a starting quarterback in this league. Do I think he can be an elite Pro Bowl level quarterback? I don't believe so, but I do believe he can lead a team to wins in this league. In Cleveland or elsewhere? Mm. I think he's going to have to be elsewhere. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the place for him uh, to excel. They don't really have the right people around him, and their offense isn't ran well, in a way I feel like he can be super productive. Yeah. Skip, Ryan, Molly, three quarterbacks. Johnny Manziel, RG3, Colin Kaepernick all need to be 
elsewhere. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Yep. Can I get a score quick, guys? Let, let me answer I, this oh, yeah, real quick. Yeah, just just yeah. real quick. Look, Johnny off the field has issues. We, we know about them. He was in rehab for a, an estimated 10 weeks, two months. Mm -hmm. And he came back into this year on a zero tolerance policy. And then he had this incident. And it really, really disappointed me. I'm a big fan of his on and off the field. But I think he did himself so much damage around the league in interest level on other teams because he showed everybody, I don't really care about football that much because I'm going to threaten it with this incident. And I'm going to admit to the cops, well, I'm off the wagon. I had a couple of drinks earlier today. Then you got the incident with his living girlfriend, and we're not sure how that's going right. to come out after the investigation. And I think other teams said, really? That, that's all you got? That, that's all you care about, your, what's Skip. left of your career? Skip, let me tell you why I, I, you're not, I want to emphasize, you're not wrong. But I'm going to tell you why I think you're a bit more alarmed than you need to be. I think the combination of his troubles are exacerbated by knowing, I'm going to use this phrase, I think he's in a hostile working environment. What I mean by that is that Hostile working environment, some, in some people's eyes, at least to some degree, is defined by being in a place where you know you're not wanted by some powers that be. And life is made to be unnecessarily difficult for you. The nuances of your daily activities, if you can understand where I'm coming from, Ryan, that's where I'm going here. I think it's the combination of his troubles combined with the working environment combined with the people that he has around his personal life. Because aside from the incident in question that we're still trying to learn about as it pertained to his girlfriend and he being pulled over by the police, it was clear that he ain't the only one that was drinking something. So if you have somebody in an intimate capacity that's involved in your life and the very, very thing that inhibits you and is a detriment and an Achilles to you is surrounded by you, because of who you have in your life, then you got some changes to make. Correct. And so for me, it's about him needing a different location more so than anything else. And I think that different location ultimately assists everything because if you're in a better working environment, you got a better attitude. When you have a better attitude, it's almost like having money. If you've got something and you, if you don't have anything, Skip, one of the problems we've got in our society, if you don't have anything, you don't have anything to lose. But when you have something, you have something to lose and then you guard it better. And as a result, the company that you keep, the environment that you're around, the people that you allow to be in your inner circle, you are much, much more guarded. So I think the second he goes elsewhere to a place that welcomes him, I think everything will get better from that point forward. And that's why I say I don't think that you should be as worried. The big problem in all of this is that that man is in Cleveland. I think if he were in Texas with the Houston Texas or somebody, I think it would be a better environment. Yeah, so. I agree with your premise, and I hope you're right about his future. Yep. And also, I like that the cap and RG3 there as well also need a change of environment. Ryan sticking with us. Up next, let's talk about some champions, guys. JPP back on the practice field with the G-Men, and he could champions. play this weekend. Yeah.